everyone this is Melanie from Melanie B's creative studio and as I promised you I'm back with part two I'm gonna be using a shipper painting today for, for my example on working in tight spaces and how I use this five-piece detail brush set that I actually sell in my store now uh, to get into all of these areas this is the only set of brushes I'm gonna need for this entire piece so even though in the last part one video, I showed you this flat shader, this is actually too big for all of these openings. So I'm not even gonna need it for this particular painting. This painting is called Sunny Caribbean and by Shipper. And it has been a while since I've worked on this piece because I've put it aside and worked on pieces for videos. And this is my personal paint by number downtime painting. But I thought it would be perfect to demonstrate for tight spaces and how I get in here in these areas and really use these brushes to my benefit. In addition, I'm gonna talk about as I paint a little bit, what I'm doing to condition my brushes so that they stay in this perfect point. Now these wipes that I'm using are not baby wipes, they are cosmetic wipes and I sell Pharmacy Beauty and I have sold it for over a year now. And so when Patty Jo from the group told me about how she used cosmetic wipes instead of baby wipes to condition her paintbrushes, I went and grabbed a pack out of my stash and I tried them and I have been obsessed. So basically I sell these now at my online store along with the paintbrushes and some other very handy tools. So be sure you check all that out. Um, the Pharmacy Wipes are the best ones that I have found and I think they're amazing and they're not expensive. They're $4.90 a pack, you guys, for 20 of these wipes. Now you can see I am reusing a wipe that I used for a prior video or for a prior painting. It's got pink on it. So all I did was just re-wet it and it has reactivated the conditioning agent and I'm just folding that part down and I'm gonna just use what it, you know, what I have left. I don't throw this away until it gets covered in paint. So I will continue to use the same wipe as long as possible. All right, so I'm gonna start by showing you some detail areas in here. There's not a lot of this painting that requires a flat shader, even one this small, but you can see up in here, this area would be a nice place for this type of brush. So I will use it on this section. But for the most part, I'm gonna show you all these little small areas in here what brushes I use in which spaces. So I'm gonna give you kind of an idea of what my setup is here. I'm gonna drop the camera down so that we can get in real close and real tight and you can see what I'm doing. And so what I have is my, the Faber-Castell Click and Go Water Cup and it is amazing. And inside I have a paint puck and I have a metal stir. Now everything I use in my videos are in the description below. Every link for every product. I always have this information in there because these are products I use every single time I paint. Cosmetic wipes are down below too and the brushes as well. This shipper painting, I don't know if it's available right now, but I will also include a link of where you can find it when it is available again. So I'm gonna drop down. I wanna make sure that when I drop down that I'm including this section so you can see how I rinse and wipe and keep my brushes in great shape. So let's do that. I'm gonna tell you which brush I'm using in which area so that you can see what I'm doing. And first things first, before I start, because I conditioned these before I left these brushes, I wanna make sure I'm rinsing to begin with. So I'm gonna go in with number 12. Now you can see my, my paints have set up since the last time I've used them. So I am going to stir them off screen with my, my little metal paint stirrer and get them mixed back up again. If they are too thick, then I'm gonna use the Flow Aid like I've talked about in a lot of other videos. You guys, Flow Aid's a must have. I have videos on just Flow Aid. So if you're not sure how that's used, please refer to those videos. On this little number 12 here, it is not a super tiny little opening, 
but I'm going to go in with the two slash zero because it's kind of a, a good size for this piece. Now, when you're choosing a paintbrush for an opening, keep in mind, you want to use the largest paintbrush that you can for that opening. And the reason you do that is because it will prevent streaking in your paints the larger you go. So you see I only get a tiny bit of paint on my brush. Actually, I see a little smaller 12 right here. Let's go into this one. So this is probably not the largest paintbrush I can use for this opening, but I'm really comfortable with this size of a paintbrush for most openings that are fairly small. So you'll notice I will continue to use the same paintbrush as long as I possibly can before I switch out. It is not easy painting from a distance. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you. It's a little hard when you're back here like this. But you see how quickly I fill that in. It is super smooth. There's no streaking. And let me give you an example of what I mean. So what I'm gonna do first of all, let me talk about restoring brushes. So I'm gonna wipe my brush on the paint puck that's in the bottom. I'm not getting my brush down in here in this water so deep that it's coming up into the ferrule, which I explained in the last video in part one. Then I'm coming over to my little cosmetic wipe and I'm turning and pulling, getting excess water off of the ferrule and also reshaping the point of my brush. And it is perfection. Then I'm gonna try I'm going to show you how I can use a brush like the Zero in a small area just as well. So I'm going to get it wet just to get off any prior conditioning I might have done with my white. And then I'm going to reshape it, getting the water off the ferrule. And let's go to this little number 12 or this little 12. And I'm only getting the same amount of paint. Okay, now I need to move these out of the way. So all I'm gonna do is apply less pressure. I can still fill this opening up with that bigger paintbrush, but I'm just not gonna push down on the brush as much. Because if I push down, I'm applying a lot of paint and then I could go outside the lines or whatever because I've got too much, you know, bearing down. But you can see that the size zero pointed round brush is just as handy as the smaller ones. So where this brush is going to come in handy in a big way is going to be, for example, number 11. So number 11 comes down through here like this. This is the brush I'm gonna use in that opening because it's the largest brush for that opening that I have here, except for the flat shader. Now the flat shader is gonna be a little too big and I can't maneuver around. So I'm not gonna use this one for that opening, but I am gonna use this zero. I also am gonna show you how a tiny brush in a bigger opening leaves some kind of streaking, especially if it's not already gessoed. Like I gesso my shippers, um, and so they hold the paint so beautifully, I don't notice streaking anyway. But for those of you who don't, this might help you to see why you're getting streaking. All right, so let me go into number 11, and let's just use this number one pointed round brush. Because it's a little larger opening, I can get a little bit larger amount of paint on my brush. And I'm gonna try to keep my hand out of that. I don't usually paint in this order. Like I usually work myself left to right, top to bottom kind of thing, or actually top to bottom, left to right. But it's a little different when you're doing it for a demonstration. I'm trying to get in here and I can't really see what I'm doing without getting super close. Let me get in here. So I can reload. I still have enough of a point to outline this opening. And I'm gonna get even a little bit more just to show you what happens if you get that much. So I can take that much, I put it in the center of the cell. 
Then I'm gonna use that paint that I put down. Let's say I got too much. Whoa, I got too much. Then I'm gonna use it as my palette and just kind of pull it and stretch that paint down into these other areas. Now, when I need to get close to the edge, I'm only using the tip of this paintbrush. But when I get into these opening open areas, I will flatten the paintbrush out, pushing on it, and it covers more space for me. And you can see how nicely that covers. Okay, so that is using the Zero Round Brush. Now, let us go in to an, a larger opening, like let's say 33, and let's try a tiny brush, just to show you what happens and how many strokes it takes and the difference in streaking and all that that happens if you don't use the right size brush and the right cell. Now, let me rephrase that just a little bit. There is no right or wrong, but there is a more efficient way and there's also a more successful turnout if you do some of these little tips and, and tricks that I'll talk about. So let's go in. I'm going to take this tiny brush. This would be torture for me to paint with if I had a size something this big, this number 33. There's a really big 33. I'm going to tilt this a little bit so I can kind of avoid getting my hand in here. And let, let me go in. Now, this paintbrush is only going to hold so much paint. It's not much. It's like a tiny drop. So first of all, that's going to tell me, first thing, I'm going to have to reload this brush 15 times just to get this one little opening painted, okay? So I'm going to use this little tiny brush and outline, and I'm already out of paint. So that's twice I've dipped into my paint. Three times. Okay, so I made the joke that it might take me 15 times dipping into my paint to get that piece covered with this tiny paintbrush. It actually took 14. <laughs> and I globbed it on sometimes. <laughs> so the point of that demonstration is to show you, you waste time going back and forth into your paint pot if you use a tiny brush on a larger opening. I also have streaking. And it's not streaking that you necessarily can visually see where you are, but I can see from an angle where the light hits that there's little raised areas and there's flat areas. Because the point is so small, when I pull it through, it's leaving lines. So if I had a brush this size, it's gonna leave less of those little lines in it. And it's gonna take me less time to fill up that space. So let's try that theory on maybe this number 33 with this longer brush and see how many times I have to dip back into my paint to fill this section. So I'm not gonna do this whole 33 because it comes up here and it goes all the way down. What I'm gonna do is one that's about the same size. I'm gonna start about right here and fill it all up. And let's see how much, how many dips of the paint I have to do to cover that much surface. Okay, so I dipped four times. 
and it only makes sense, you know, I mean, it's just a logical thinking process to think, well, if I have a large brush, I'm going to have more paint, I'm going to be able to fill up a space, you know, quicker. But if it's also going to give you a better, smoother coverage, then it only makes sense to use the right size brush in the right size opening. Let me see if I can find an opening that might work for our flat shader because I really wanna show you why this one is so important in most paintings. So you can see I've already done the larger openings here and this is where I would use that flat shader brush. I don't think I have any more openings on this piece that really need that size but we're gonna check it out here. So number 18 is about the smallest opening that I would use for the flat shader brush. So I will, I will do that for you guys and show you how I do that kind of opening. I have done videos on larger openings before. I've never done a video on detail and tiny openings. So that's why I wanted to kind of concentrate on that with that on this video. I'm gonna rotate my canvas around because I don't want my hands in that down there. And also it gives me a little bit better angle for this. I've already rinsed the conditioning agent off this brush. I'm just gonna take it and get a little bit on it. And what I'll do is I will avoid getting super close to the edges but I will fill the center of this cell with the, with the paint. And then I'm gonna use one of my smaller brushes to get the detail around the edges. Now I do use the flat brush to get up here like this, but since this has got such so many little crooks, nooks and crannies and little areas. It's a little, it's, it's just easier for me to switch brushes than to sit here and try to do this detail work. But I do want to show you that I do this all the time. I also wanna make sure my hand stays out of the camera and my head. I probably have bed head. One of the beauties of being able to do videos without showing your face. So I'm gonna fill as much of that as I can with that flat shader brush. I'm gonna rinse it off. I know I'm not gonna be using it again. And then I'm gonna pull it across my wipe. And that brush is gonna look exactly like this when I come back to it. Now I'm gonna go in here with the, to finish these little curved edges, I'm gonna go in with the number three aught. I'm gonna rinse off any of the conditioning agent and pull it back through just real lightly to replace the to reshape the point. And I do that every time, you guys. And then I'm just gonna use it to get in here on these edges and to define the little small sections. Now, another thing you'll notice that I do is I pull in one direction. When you're painting like this with a paint by number, it's a little different. It's a lot different than if you were painting just a regular you know, painting with acrylic paint, freehanding. You wanna pull it in one direction so you're not fraying your brush. You don't wanna go back and forth like you're coloring with a pencil. You want to pull towards you or you wanna to go to the side. Either way, you want to pull and lift, pull and lift. You can't see me lift, but I pull and I lift and reposition and pull and lift and reposition. And it is so much better for your paintbrushes if you're doing it that way so you're not fraying your brushes. Now I'm gonna rotate and people will say, well, I don't use clear gesso because it frays my brushes. Well, I'm sorry, but that is okay. Everybody has their own way. But in this situation, if I'm using these cosmetic wipes and I'm restoring every time I rinse my brush, I don't have to not gesso. I can gesso and keep my brushes restored and use tiny little brushes that will stay looking like they do. Mine are perfect. Now, I'm not gonna say they'll be perfect forever and ever, but if I'm gonna spend $15 on five paintbrushes, 
That means I'm paying $3 a paintbrush and I'm getting, and then I'm buying a $4.90 pack of cosmetic wipes. I'm gonna get how much longevity off that set? So I can use the same set of paint brushes for eight to nine months at least, because that's how long I've been using ones just like this, and I know that they're gonna last. All right, so guys, I hope that's helped you see how I use this amazing mini detail paintbrush set. And now you know why I chose this set of all the paintbrushes on the market to sell in my store, because there are no others that are that just ideal for what we need it for. Don't forget, if you do go pick up these paintbrushes, to grab a pack of the wipes while you're there to make sure that you're keeping your paintbrushes in perfect condition. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because you know you don't want to miss anything. You guys, I upload three videos a week right now, and I have over 160 paint-by-number videos, and I think I have 70 60 or 70 diamond painting videos. I now have cross-stitch videos. I also have some scratch art for adults, et cetera, et cetera. So you guys know that you need to hit that subscribe button and join me on Patreon, on the Facebook group, Instagram, and on Pinterest. You guys, thanks as always for watching and I will see you back soon.